So we are now just three days away from the tax filing deadline. If you haven't already, all taxpayers must submit their returns or request an extension by this Monday, with most people uh, receiving uh, their refunds within 21 days. So for some last minute tips on filing, I'm joined by CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger. So I, I said this yesterday or the day before, that even if you ask for an extension, if you end up owing, you, you still might get dinged with penalties and stuff like that. Like they don't. People don't give recognize your... this. Okay, so let's just kind of take a deep breath. Yeah. You've got three days to go, all right? Okay. You're, you're falling into one of two camps. <laughs> you are either a procrastinator or you probably owe money. Those are the two types of people who wait to the bitter end. Yeah. Now, according to IRS statistics, we've already seen 90 million returns filed. That leaves about 40, 50 million more to go. Wow. So there are people who wait to the bitter end. Yeah. Let's talk about the people who are just procrastinators. Go to the IRS website, irs.gov. Everything is there. There is an e-file system, electronic filing, the safest, fastest way to file. You don't and have to pay somebody to do your taxes. No. It's, it's okay. And if you earn less than $79,000, you're entitled to IRS free file. This is software. It's also, they work with uh, private companies and you get the software for free. Right. And it's awesome. It's amazing. People should use it. Right. All right. So if you are completely freaked or maybe you're missing some documentation which does happen like right. we just talked about there are self-employed people i didn't get a k-1 i didn't get this document mm -hmm. i have to go on extension you go to the very mm -hmm. magical irs.gov website and you file for an extension and now you're going to say but yeah that's my but the but just is, be aware of that when you file for an extension what happens is you have an extra six months to complete the filing process mm -hmm. but that does not mean you get six months to pay. You have to know that the IRS is going to start the clock and say, yeah. hey, if you think you owe money, send us some money right now. Because an extension is an extension to file that work, but not to pay. Yeah. And that bill starts immediately. So be clear, if you think you owe money, throw some money at the IRS. That's good. So we were talking kind of beforehand, and you, you already kind of went through some of the tools that the IRS offers. But if you do have mm. to pay, um, you know, some, I mean, sometimes I remember when the tax whole thing shifted and I was kind of out of sync and it was the first time that I had like a kind of an unexpectedly large tax bill that I owed and I had to really, you know, look around and see how do I pay this. Poor you, you made too much money. I mean, I'm just kidding. That's what yeah. I say to people. Hey, people, <laughs> you're worried about your tax bill? It's a good thing. You can earn your money. This is good. Okay, so here's the thing. When you're looking at paying a bill, there are generally two big issues to consider. Mm -hmm. One is... Do I have enough money over the next, say, six months that I'll be able to do it? A lot of people, that is true. Again, yeah. let's think about like a self-employed person. I'm a realtor. I know a house is closing. I haven't gotten my commission check. Or I've got a business or I know this is happening. Or I'm getting a bonus. I'm an employee. Yeah. So if you're the kind of person who thinks you can make it if you have six more months, there is a short-term payment plan that the IRS offers. No fees, no nothing. It's really easy to mm. use. If the problem is a longer-term problem, it's a long-term payment plan. Right. This will give you up to five years, and you will set up a system with the IRS that says, take money out of my checking or savings account mm -hmm. every single month. And yes, there are fees associated mm -hmm. with this, and yes, you're going to have to pay interest, but you'll get it paid off. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're going for. Do people ever take out loans to pay off big bills? Like that? So a very good question, yeah. because I think some people may, but... Almost the worst case scenario is that there is actually the ability for taxpayers to put their tax liability, what they owe, on a credit card. I take it you do not recommend that. Even with Thumbs the even down. with the possible of pen, possibility of penalties and stuff from the IRS, that's still like a terrible it, idea. Well, okay. The IRS itself is like, hey, you could use your credit card, but it's the most expensive way to pay us mm. because there are fees associated with using your card, number mm. one. And you know what happens when people put um, a bill that they can't afford on their credit card? It often stays there for a mm. while. And if you have uh, some of the money that is participating in that $1.13 trillion of outstanding credit card debt, yeah. and you're just adding your IRS bill on, that's a very expensive debt to pay off. Yeah. So when you say, do people take out loans? Sometimes people will say, you know what? I'll take a loan for my 401k. I'll take a loan that is uh, maybe a personal line of credit. I think what's most important is to investigate the IRS payment system because it really tends to be the most efficient way to pay mm. your bill. I am in the, the gang that thinks the IRS is really understaffed um, still. Mm. 
And if you can use that IRS website, there are all the tools right there for you at irs.gov. See, there you go. So don't panic. Don't, don't panic. delay. No. You have options. Uh, Jill Sessioner, thank you very much. Sure.